Woo! What better time to launch a new product? This is exciting. It's a brand new Seasonic power supply. But they said this one's gonna be a little different. Let's take a look. You like standards? I like standards too. This wood screw was just about a hundred years old. It takes a flathead, it's, you know, it's a screw that it really haven't changed a lot. I guess most wood screws now are probably positive drive so that, you know, it doesn't, uh, doesn't cam out because dealing with a flathead, it's not really a lot of fun. Standards are good. Standards and power supplies are good, right? Those really haven't changed since, uh, well, I think they've only really changed twice and then they just keep bolting on more stuff. So the original IBM XT had two connectors, which you could reverse. Oops, I plugged it in the wrong order. Well, it depended on your power supply. And then there was ATX. It was a 20 pin, not a 24 pin. And then, which voltages were important to the computer changed. It was five volts, and then it was 3.3 volts and five volts, and then it was 12 volts and five volts, and then it was just 12 volts. I don't know what that is. Fan control, you can do hybrid mode. That means the fan turns off completely if you're running sufficiently under wattage. This is an 850 watt power supply. That's for custom loop. So there must be, there, there must be some mistake. Uh, I've got the power supply, which is not modular. And then I've got these connectors here. This does not look like a motherboard connector at all. And then I've got all these modular cables. There has to be some, some kind of a mistake. Oh wait, <laughs> check this out. So this, look, you've got your fan control, you've got your RGB distribution hub, you've got your power, you've got your graphics card connections, you've got your motherboard connections, and your PCI Express power. This, this goes on the inside of your case. So you put this behind the motherboard tray, and you put this power supply in where you would normally. This ends up just being a feeder cable to feed this, and this is where your power distribution is, but you know, it'd be easier if I just show you. This is the Synchro Q7. So yeah, you don't have to have the Seasonic case, but Seasonic's making cases? Synchro accessory box. This is a white glove affair. Velcro strips, cleaning cloth, and lots of mounting hardware. And a nice, attractive, reusable plastic box. That's a nice touch. Cool, look at that. And check this out. Inverted motherboard mounting position. <laughs> Transportation lock, remove first. Oh, it's screwed in. Oh, that's some hefty, attractive aluminum. And it's got a little rubber thing. You could reuse this, save it. Hey, I like that. It's a nice magnetic seal. I like some of the little details in this case. It does have separate headphone and microphone connectors at the top. It's got, you know, full USB five gigabit ports at the top, two of those, and one USB type C. It's got a full power button and a full reset button. Now you might've noticed the other side panel. It has a cutout. It has a cutout for cable routing. So you could get fancy with the cable routing or 3D print some accessories or do some other fancy things. But I think that's where this goes. Can you see the separation on the front here? It's kind of like this metal angled thing. It gives it a certain look. Four fans, we're dealing with something premium here. Four really high end looking fans. These look suspiciously familiar. All right, so I think if you want to buy this case without the power supply, you'll be fine. Obviously it comes with all the stuff. It's just a standard mounting kit. But if you get the power supply, see there's this cable shroud on this side which remains. This is the part you can see through the side, the side panel. So this has also got little magnets in it. So you could use it without the screws, I guess, if you want. Now you might remember, this looks a little familiar. You know, as I work on this and sort of swap out the innards here and get the power supply set up, we've seen this before at Computex. <laughs> remember in the before times when you could travel? This is something that Seasonic has been working on for years. I don't think they had to come up with their own case in order to show the utility of this idea, but you know, ATX power supplies haven't changed a lot in the last few years. And OEMs are switching to 12 volt only solutions where you've only got a 12 volt cable that runs to the motherboard. But for enthusiasts and builders, 
I don't know if we're there yet. This might make a pretty reasonable stepping stone. So these power connections will be available right in the uh, motherboard cavity. Now I've got this fancy fan Y cable, which goes to the front fans, but with the Seasonic distribution thing, I can just plug those directly in. Warning, use only cables provided by Seasonic. Can confirm. If you intend to do mining, please contact Seasonic for special cables. Uh, if you intend to do mining, please contact Seasonic for special cables that have been laced with polonium so you get what you deserve. No, I'm just kidding. That's how we all feel, right? So look how much room you have coming out of that. And that's basically it. That's the extent of your power supply cabling. Everything else connects to this distribution block, including your RGB. So you can see you'll have short little CPU power cables that come to here, because remember your motherboard is inverted. And then on, the, on this side, you've got all your accessory cables. So you've got all your GPU power that you might need up there, and you've got your motherboard connector right here, which on most motherboards just means you have a little short cable coming across here to your motherboard. And there's still room to hide your cables, so you can stuff your extra cables back in here, and then they come over there. It's pretty smart, really. One thing that I would have loved to have seen in this case, especially if you're contemplating a Threader for Pro build, is uh, a little bit more room at the top here, because with the motherboard inverted, the GPU could be face up at the top of the case. So it's seven slots at the back. If it were you know, nine slots at the back, you could put a triple GPU in the very last slot on your motherboard, and the tooling and stuff for this case would only be a little bit different. You know, I think Seasonic could do a thousand unit run of that and sell every one of them because how cool would it be to have your, you know, your heat generating GPU at the top of your case, you know, bringing fresh air in from the top, exhausting, you know, at the side or whatever, and uh, your Threadripper Pro motherboard inverted. I think that'd be pretty awesome. In terms of official motherboard compatibility, it's ATX, EATX, ITX, of course, and Micro ATX. Now one minor oversight that you should be aware of on this Seasonic case is this right angle here. If you're using one of these larger than life Threadripper motherboards that have a right angle connector on the front edge, it is gonna be a little problematic. See it's here, this is in at an angle. I really should use a right angle extension cable or a right angle bracket so that it's not putting stress on the motherboard. Uh, the tray, if it were, the tray were set back just a little bit more, this would actually work really well. But as it is, it's a little problematic. The maximum CPU cooler height is 185 millimeters, so keep that in mind if you're gonna go for a tower cooler. And the maximum GPU length is 385 millimeters. There is room for a 360 millimeter radiator in both the top and the front, but note there's not quite enough room at the rear for a 140 millimeter radiator, although it's got screw holes for a 140 millimeter fan. You might be able to make a 140 millimeter radiator work at the, at the rear, sandwiching the fan between the case and the radiator, but uh, they don't, see something doesn't recommend that. There are three two and a half inch bays at the rear of the motherboard tray and two three and a half inch bays, which of course you can use the three and a half inch bays for two and a half inch as well, that's fine. But uh, it's a pretty good amount of expandability considering that this case isn't overly large and it is a lot metal. Like the feet are a very nice brushed aluminum metal. There's there's very little plastic on this case, really. I think I've really got to do a full build in this system to know exactly what it's all about, but I got far enough along with my AMD Epic build, and I got far enough along with the Threadripper build that I sort of know what it's about. I like the inverted motherboard configuration. I've been running that for a while in another case. Um, it does make things a little challenging with some things, like if you were gonna go with a Threadripper build and you wanted a CPU cooler like the uh, Ice Giant Thermo Siphon, in this case is not going to be a good choice, not because there's not enough room, but because the thermosiphon depends on being oriented a certain way. And if your case orients it upside down, or if you're trying to use Threadripper Pro, the cooler's not going to work. But that's few and far between. You know, an AIO or a tower cooler is going to work perfectly fine in this case. Just consider what direction your air is going to flow, and that's pretty much all you got to worry about. Now, as with everything, you know, all the wrinkles come out when you do a full build and use it for a while. But I'm also really impressed by the fans uh, from looking at them and doing a few little experiments with them. They look like they're really pretty high-end fans, but we'll only know for sure once I get that build done. 
I'm Whittle, this is level one. This has been a quick look at Seasonic's new power supply, uh, the 850 watts in this particular build, and their new Q704. They're doing something different, and I think that should be encouraged because, well, power supplies have uh, needed to be disrupted for a while now. Um, you know, most OEM motherboards use 12 volt only. I'd love to see that in the enthusiast space where the motherboards synthesize any voltages they need other than 12 volts, you know, minus five volts and plus 3.3 volts and minus 3.3 volts. They can just figure that out on their own with voltage pumps. We don't we don't need to run those from the power supply. It just makes the power supply bulkier and, and weirder than it needs to be. So I welcome this change. I'm one of this is level one, I'm signing out. And you can find me in the level one forums, probably with some follow-ups on this build. I'll see you there.